today we're going to have a look at how to make a type of diverging plot, sometimes known as a spine. It's essentially back-to-back -back bar charts, where one bar chart goes one direction and the other bar chart goes the other, thus able to show us deviation, plus and minus. I think a natural way to show this would be something like wins and losses for a sports team. Since I come from the Bay Area and grew up watching basketball, let's just have a look at the historic Golden State Warriors win-loss record. And so to get that data, we can go online to a website like this basketballreference.com. I've navigated to the Golden State Warriors and now you can see that it has historic data all the way back to when they were called San Francisco Warriors and even before that when they were from Philadelphia. This has what I'm interested in, which is the historic win-loss record or counts. And so let's just use this. Now, in order to get this in to the data we want, I think we can just go to share export and then we can say get table as CSV. It says for Excel, we can put it anywhere, but that's fine. And what it actually gives us then is a list of all this data in comma separated format. And so I have the season and then the wins and the losses, the percentages and so on. It's a little hard to read here because it's not trying to make it into a table. It's just giving us something that we can use as a table. So let's go ahead and copy it in. I'm just going to click over here. You could click and drag. I think that's more work than we need. If I just click at the beginning, scroll down to the end, and hold shift and click again, it'll highlight it all for us. I'm missing one thing here, so I'm just gonna hold down shift and click to, uh, the right arrow. That then highlights everything. I'm gonna say copy. Then I'm going to go to an Excel sheet and paste it in. It's still a mess because it's just, this column has everything in it. The season, the league, the team, the win, the loss, all in this one column, right? So if I go off of A, I don't see anything. If I go down, I'll see all the information for each season contained in here. So what it's done is it's put everything into one column because it didn't know to separate it. An easy way to handle that is to select the column that you would like to redistribute. Make sure that you're in the data pane of this ribbon and then go to text to columns. In here, we'll have a dialog. I'll say that yes, this data is delimited, which is different than fixed width, where each field would just have a particular area or number of characters. But this is delimited, where the thing that delimiates it is the comma. And so you can see before I select comma, it's just that column that we saw before. Now I hit column and it has divided it up. It's taken out the commas, and every time there's a comma, it just starts a new column. So I'll say finish, and now I have what I want. The season, the league, the team, and the, importantly, the wins and loss. I'll just scan the top of this real quick, because I know views is gonna have a header. It's gonna, I've set it up so that when I import data, views will see that there's a header. And so I don't want the header to ever repeat itself, especially for what I'm interested in is wins and losses. And I can see that is the case. So then I'll just go ahead and save this. Now it's ready as a CSV to be imported into views. Here is the views file that I'm going to work with. And so let's go ahead and load the data. Just navigate to where I saved this. And there is the data. I can see how it will preview. Looks right. So let's just import that. Now in the data pan, panel, I can see I have wins and losses, W and L. That's ultimately what I'm interested in. Now, how I'm gonna make this plot is that I need to have one bar going, let's say, to the right, that's wins, and one set of bars going to the left, that's losses. An easy way to make this in views is just to use our grid system. I will have a grid system with two columns, with no margin between them. One is gonna have a bar that goes to the right, one's gonna have a bar that goes left for wins and losses. So let's make that. I'm gonna make, to begin with, just the wins column, knowing that eventually I need to make the losses column as well. 
So let's make a grid first. Let's put this graph inside of the grid. Let's say that this graph needs to have a bar chart and then that bar chart needs to have the wins. Ultimately, I'd love to have the wins and losses such that they read right to left. We know how to solve that. I just make this horizontal. I don't really like the red color here. I think wins maybe works better if it's something like blue. And so let's just go in and say, how about aqua? That looks very nice. Also, I really don't like the black borders. So let's just go ahead and hide those. Now I have a bunch of bars for wins, organized essentially by seasons, though we haven't yet named it that. We'll come back to whether we want to do that or not. These are all the wins, and I could even give the x-axis that title if I really wanted to. I could say this is wins. What I would like to have now is losses going the opposite direction. And so I'm just going to take this graph and say copy, paste. I can see now that I have wins in that second graph going to the right. So let me just call this wins so I know what I'm looking at. This is now going to become my losses. And then I can go to the bar and say instead of W, I want the loss column, which is L. Now, it got a little bit bigger, <laughs> um, but that's because it's also rescaled here. This is going the wrong direction. It's horizontal, that's correct, but it's going the wrong direction and it's the wrong color. Maybe losses should be red, so let's just go ahead and go in here and recolor the bars real quick. How about maraschino? Let's see how we like that. That looks pretty good. Those are nice complementary colors that are also red and blue, which I think works pretty well for us. Now that I have the right color, I need the bar to go the other way. The easiest way to do that is to go in the x-axis and tell it to run the opposite direction. What I can do then is just swap the min and max positions. Right now, the maximum position is at 1. Remember, we have 0 and 1 refers to 0 and 1 reading left to right. So if I make the min position instead at 1, it will move the minimum over here. If I make the maximum position at 0, it will take this maximum value and move it over there. So let's just go ahead and do that. There's 1 and the max now at 0, and now the bars run backwards. The last thing is I would like this bar and that bar to touch. And there are many ways to do this, but I think for right now, how I want to solve this is just to go to the grid system and say 0 margins. That's created inside of here again all the margins zero for both of these plots and now i basically have what i want i can't quite see the x-axis yet and we'll come in and we'll solve that in just a moment but let's worry about this y-axis first what i can see is that there's a line down the middle and then i also have a series of tick marks this y-axis is the y-axis for the second plot so let's go ahead and go in and click on the y-axis and say, I kind of do actually like this line, but I don't really want the tick marks. So let's just hide the two sets of tick marks. And now I have that nice line that divides win and losses, but I don't have the tick marks anymore. I also can see that there's a line right on the edge. And the reason there's a line right on the edge is because this plot over here has a y-axis and you can see when I click on it, it's highlighted. I don't want that and we don't need to show it, so I'll just hide the entire axis and now it's gone. I can see a similar line down here and that's because there's an x-axis. I do want to see the x-axis. So let's just go to the bottom margin for the grid and say, let's make this two centimeters for right now. It's probably bigger than we need, but we can come back and solve it. You can also see that this runs from zero to 80 and zero to 70, and that's giving us a skewed look at this because it is artificially lengthening these bars relative to this. If I really wanna show this, these need to have the same total axis. And so let's go to X and say this should go from zero to how about 79. I actually don't need to show all the way to 80, and I think this is gonna clear up things for me actually down the line. So there's 79. You can see it looks like I could even get to 75, 
And that makes sense because there's really only 70-ish odd games in the season anyway. And so let's go ahead and just make that adjustment both places. Now there's just way too many tick marks here. I also don't need this like double zero somehow. It'd be nice if this could just be shared. So let's see if we can solve that real quick. There's a couple different ways again that one could do that. But here I have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. Do we need that many? I don't know, but we definitely, I don't think need the tick marks in the middle. So let's just get rid of those minor tick marks for one moment and see if we think that cleans it up enough. So we're in the x-axis now for the right plot. I need to go to the minor tick mark panel and say hide. To me, borderline. It is borderline whether I like this or not. They're a little close together for my taste, but it's also not terrible. So maybe in the interest of not spending forever on this video, I will just keep it that way. Now how to solve this double zero? There are two ways to solve it. One, which is probably the most correct, would be to go in and just give us manual tick marks for this leftmost axis at 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and 70. And now the zero goes away. This zero is still scooted over to the edge a little bit. And so we would do the same exact thing over here and then add one label in the middle exactly where we want it that says zero or to trust people to notice that zero. That's probably gonna be our easiest solution. Again, if it's something that you really care to get this tick mark here, it can be done, um, but it's, gonna, it's not gonna be 100% straightforward right now. So again, in the interest of keeping this video short, we're just gonna let it be right now, knowing that this isn't quite the best outcome, but at least we know how to construct this plot. Now, what else could we do? We need to clean this up ever so slightly. I think that the bottom margin, of course, could be much smaller. So how about 0.5 centimeters? That is definitely too small. How about one centimeter? Now we have something that looks a little bit better. We don't have labels here. How do I add in labels? Well, one thing that will be hard is that these bars are a little bit too narrow, okay? And so we could, of course, just tell people that these are all the seasons going in order from the first season to the last season. That could be done in the title. If we really wanted to label each one of these, then we're gonna have to make the bars thicker. And really the only way to do that is to make the page taller. And so let's make this page height like 10 inches. And now I have something where the bars are actually kind of thick. Okay, so now let's go to view. Let's go to zoom to page. And I have this bar where now I'm seeing what's going on. And you can see by having thicker bars, I can actually kind of see this distribution shown here. And then what I need to do is figure out how to add labels. Now I could add labels to the edges, but one thing I think can look nice in these kind of plots is to put the labels right down the middle. So how do I do that? I could go into the grid and I can give myself an internal margin of one centimeter. And now I've made space in here for us to label things. So let's add in labels. We know how to do that. I can go to this bar and I can say that the labels for this bar are something like the season. And then I can go to the y-axis and say that what I really want instead of numeric mode is labels. And look at that, now I have all the labels right down the middle. I can see that they kind of overlap ever so slightly. And so let's just go back to this internal margin and say this maybe should have been 1.1 centimeters. Now I have it all labeled. There is a line here, and if I don't want that line there, I can just go in and say, instead of showing this line, let's hide that line. That's one way to get a finished looking plot where now I have the labels and the bars and they go all the way down. Sometimes you might like having lines on either side. That could look good, and so let's just see real quick how we like that. So I could say, 
um, if I want to actually show this y-axis, which is over here, but I'd like it to be on the other side, that means that the axis position should be at one. I don't need the labels to show up, which are these numbers right now. And so let's go ahead and hide those. Let's go back to this and let's show that line. And now we can see that we start to have this lined column down the middle. Let's also go back to this Y and get rid of these tick marks that we don't need anymore. Just clean it up a little bit. So with that, now we know how to make a divided bar chart and hopefully you have some fun going out making some divided bar charts showing the relative ratios of one thing to another using the grid system and views in order to make that task easier.